This is Sony's brand new XAV9550 ES. Let's get it unboxed and show you what it's all about. I'm excited about this one. So Sony's XAV9550 ES, I've been waiting for this for a little while now. Uh, released in the US, you'll see my previous video where we, or a client imported one because we just couldn't wait. You know, it's been, a, it's been around for around a year in the US and then because we use DAB over here and not serious radio and things like that, we just had to wait for it. That's what the delay was. So mobile ES, elevated standard from Sony, right? Everything SQ has been turned up a little bit. It has an ESS DAC inboard, which is a nice sort of high quality DAC. So everything we're going in with digitally it will be converted to the best of its abilities and then out of its RCAs or out of its own amplifier. 55 watts per channel on board in here. So you should be able to develop a system, you know, without amplifiers temporarily. We only really use head units with amplifiers and then active speakers, typically DSPs, things like that. So I'm interested in a relatively narrow bracket with this unit and that is based purely on SQ and GUI, the speed of how it, you, how, how it works. Now I'm gonna learn this product with you so I've intentionally not looked into it or anything like that. I, um, I wanna shoot my experience with unboxing it I've not opened it at all. I've got the website, I've got our website open on my um, iPad here where you can purchase the product. These are in stock now. It's 1100 quid. It's not a cheap unit from Sony. I think it's the most expensive, you know, display or media unit that Sony have ever done. So it needs to be good. Competition wise, relatively standard. It's got a lot less fluff than a lot of the competition has and I can guarantee that it will sound better. So. Uh, we choose Sony for that reason, primarily. Let's get it open. We can discuss the product while we're opening it up, all right? All right, so I'll put you in a little bit closer. You'll only be able to see my uh, lovely hands from now on. Let's get this open and see what we're dealing with. This is a floating display, so this is your sort of modern single din with a screen on the front, you know? Most of this is card, which I like to see. Not an awful lot of plastic going on other than parts that need to be, sensitive parts that need to be kept clean. We've got our mic for our hands-free, GPS. Now, this is for your wireless connection for wireless CarPlay. It's wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, uh, so you needn't connect it up to the phone. Uh, you can do, and it's USB-C. So in here is a USB-C extension cable male to female male goes in the unit female goes wherever you want to put it on the dash uh, or center console or glove box depending uh, and then your phone cable will go into there so we've got fly lead rca and videos so there's three videos in this one which isn't a typical sony thing now this has um like a triple switching camera setup so you can have left right rear things like that and they can be switched automatically and we've got our RCA output it's got front out rear out and sub out there just a single output for the sub and then the two external inputs there that is just a cable tie in there that's locking these looms together so that it doesn't put stress on the pin which is nice to see standard ISO cable what you get with any other any other head unit keys and bolts these are really important, the keys less so, and these are what's gonna fix your head unit to your display, So, which you'll see in a second. These will be trim covers for the rear, rear of the screen, so if you have to run a cable around or however it fixes to the single DIN unit itself, that'll cover that up and make it nice and pretty. Many, many books in many, many languages. We aren't gonna read them, so our big old screen. So that's a uh, 
It's a bit of a fatty, that one. Put that down. Now, like so. And then the main brain body of the unit, which is a factory sort of din sized. So this will go in cars that have, uh, you know, single din radios from stock, sort of older cars, things like that. Um, or it'll go in a double din fascia, so say like a Mark V or Caddy or T6 or something like that. You would get a double din fascia with a pocket and you can put the pocket behind the screen if you're not interested in using it or you can put the pocket below it, something like that. So yeah, this will be relatively clean on the back because a lot of the connections have been handed off to fly leads. There's a reason they do this. The more these things can do, the more occupied the real estate on the back of the unit would be. So if you can imagine trying to get these two, four, six, eight, nine, plus the two inputs on the back of this in a solid state format and still have a heat sink, you'd be occupying tons of space. We've all seen it, you know, Alpine head units and things like that uh, from from sort of, you know, older units, um, which will just have tons of, uh, tons of RCA inputs on the back and other inputs. Now Alpine were actually one of the first to adopt the sort of fly lead connections. Yeah, so standard again uh, for your, for your um, for your ISO connection, straight in there like that, and then off to your car. Whatever car you have, you'll need an ISO to, the, you know, the converter as you would with any head unit fit. And then the screen. This is probably the bit you're all here to see. This is a really, really nice looking, it's heavy, heavy thing. Really nice looking screen. Most of the mech on the back is black as well. Now, a lot of units, this is silver. It's really obvious when you're getting in the car or out of the car. If you see it from the side on, there'll be a, you know, a big silver bracket. It looks a little bit too industrial for my liking, but they've, uh, they've gotten around that with a very simple, it's like an anthracite color. It's, it's quite cool. That's the screen there. Um, I'm not gonna put this down because I do wanna put this back on. This has a, like a satin, I don't know if you can hear that. It's a satin finish to it, which is designed specifically for the radio. It's an anti-glare finish. So it hasn't got that, it's got a glass flat finish, but it hasn't got that shiny reflective glass finish. This is a capacitive screen, so it is a glass of some description. Um, but it has that, yeah, that satin anti-glare. That's a really good looking piece of kit. You know, you, you can take off like the ES stickers and high def stickers and things like that. That feels like that sort of iPad Pro kind of weight. It's substantially heavy, that. And once bolted, once coupled to the single DIN unit, if you fitted the unit properly. Um, I often, so I'll fit the cage and then I'll bolt this whole thing together and then I'll put it into the dash, but you can do it either way. You can bolt it in while it's in there. So let's go ahead and call this the female side. Let's say this is male, right? The way this would adjust in and out is by undoing this screw here, which allows the plug section to move backwards and forwards. So if you want it more flush to the dash, you want the radio to be up here, then you have to undo this screw here, like so. You only need to undo it to the point where it'll allow you to move. These have, these are a very specific screw. I'll, oh, you can't actually take that all the way out. So that's a good design. You, you could do on like the 8150 and things like that. But you can see here that this screw has like a dowel, you know, on the screw itself as part of the screw, machined as part of the screw. Um, so that makes it solid when you've moved it up into position three, which is where we would mostly have it and then you can fix it back in. And that's a guide that locks it in solid. Do your screws back up, make sure they're all lined up. Now, you see these position screws here. If you wanted the unit to tilt, you can take this screw out. All right. And on the other side. I'm gonna take these out, I'm gonna leave them out to show you um, on the video. But you would put them back in, of course, when you get it set up. Now, there is a way you can reach them. 
when your um, radio is fitted. It's a little bit fiddly and if you've got things like stalks and stuff next to the radio, uh, you might need an extended shank on whatever you know, whatever screwdriver you're using. But this enables you to tilt this screen forwards and backwards, like so. All right, you can move that like that. So if your radio is in the car pointing towards you or upwards, you can tilt this so that the screen is, you know perpendicular to the ground or you can kick it back so there's three screw positions but two holes which gives you about you know about six I think different locations where you can hold this thing in place you know if your unit is I mean it should never be facing down really but if you want to tilt your radio back if you've got a unit and then it's a flat dash top uh, then you can tilt it up so I'll leave that off for now now I've moved this plug all the way in so this will be as flush to the unit as it can get. These two couple together like so. That goes in there. And then your screws I told you about earlier, these in here, they fix into those two brackets there and these two down at the bottom. All right. There's four fixings which make this rock solid. I mean there isn't a fixing in here now and it's already solid but those four screwed in and she's not going anywhere at all and then like you say it's probably a better description to show you here but you can adjust this up and down I mean you could I wouldn't recommend it but you could probably just leave them out anyway um, and adjust it on the fly because this bracket is tight like it's a nice tight bracket don't know if it flop around over time you might end up having to put the screws in but as you can see that gives you multiple angles you know most radios are pointing up slightly like that and that gives you a nice flat face. Um, we never usually tend to do that because if the radio is pointing up, it just kicks the screen right back. That is how you put that together. It's, it's really simple. It's effectively fitting a single DIN radio, but fixing the screen onto the front. Now, of course, if you've got it tilted, if you want to tilt it back, I advise if you fit it, fit it like that. Do your fixings when it's in the dash and then tilt it back. That's if you've not mapped out what you want to do uh, and then fitted the screen to the unit beforehand and then fitted the cage to the car then slide the entire unit into the cage to lock it in place then you can use the keys to release these tabs to get it back out I probably shouldn't but I think we're going to fit one of these to our uh, three-way component test in van just because I can then you know I can then give you an installation video albeit in an older van with ISO but it will show you it in the dash how close it can get to the dash you always end up with a slight gap between the screen and whatever's behind it and then of course if you've got buttons behind there another feature is this runner here this runner allows that clamp with bolts there to run up and down so this unit can be flush with the top of this unit so the screen can drop down also and up so um, yeah you, you've got a it's not infinite but you've got a crazy level of adjustability with the screen on this the screen's not really what I'm interested in I'm interested in how good it's gonna sound in the van I'm interested in how good it's gonna sound in the real world you know so that'll be for the next video if you want to see it fired up like I said I did a I did a video on the 9500 when it came out in the US um, client imported one and uh, yeah I fired it up so you can see its screen its screen is 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 lovely and way sharp enough for a 10.1 inch screen so yeah I'd be cautious of other units shouting bigger numbers and using crazy menu systems in their GUI which just makes things nearly impossible to use this is as smooth as butter it's really easy you're in and out of it it's the same engine as like the 6050 and 4050 which is kind of borrowed from the 5650 which is just rapid so uh, it'll start up like that it'll be simple to use and away you go you're listening to sound in no time which is really important to me anything else you want to know any questions you've got about this particular unit you can ask me either in the comments or via email to info at studioincar.co.uk 
they're on our site you know if, if you see them online for a crazy price let me know all right we'll see if we can match it and we can sort of go from there i'll leave a link in the description as well so that you can see uh, any information that you might need we have like a a really handy chart that Matt put together on our site where we compare all of the Sony units in terms of their specs. It will let you know what this does, uh, what it doesn't do. So, so this doesn't do HDMI, for instance, the way that the 6050 does and the 4050. I don't know why. I don't know why they left it off, but yeah, they, they, they mustn't have, it mustn't have been as successful as they uh, uh, had hoped. So yeah, take a look at that first and then drop me a message if you want one. You're free to go through the site or you can give us a shout and I'll uh, and I'll talk you through the process. All right. I'm Carl's Studio in Car and this is Sony's brand new XAV9550ES and I'm excited about it. <laughs>